Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvryLR32 here, bringing you guys a bit of a different video. We're doing another Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth. So destroy the ever-living boo-boo brown stain off of that like and subscribe button as we keep on climbing even higher. The 1200 ladder, we're currently sitting at 1,224 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate all of the support. So I want to do another Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth uh, tutorial on purely but this time we're doing sprite purely now if you didn't see my deck profile from yesterday let me go ahead and um, shuffle these up here because this is now 42 cards um, if you did not see my deck profile uh, from yesterday or the day before I believe it was it was on a uh, Monday I believe uh, where I talked about how I came in 29th place playing purely sprite at the Boca Raton regional here in Florida Easily could have been seventh place if I would have played that game three against Cash Tira better. But you know what? At the end of the day, you know, uh, when you're under that adrenaline and pressure, you know, you're not always going to make the right plays. And that's fine. It is what it is. You know, this wasn't for like a national championship or something between first and second place. Then that would definitely be different. This was just to get my invite. I don't care about getting top eights and top 16s and stuff like that. Like, to me, as I've said before on the channel, to me, a top is you got your invite. To me, I consider that a top. I know that the majority of the community doesn't, but I don't care about getting all the top eights and the accolades and the crap like that. I let my playing speak for itself. If I get my invite, that is more than good enough for me. And I have decided officially today that, yes, your boy's going to be going to Nationals in Raleigh, North Carolina. So if you're going to be there, come on up and say hi. Maybe I'll bring the Ultra Ball with me or the Ultra Banana. Who knows? I probably won't bring that big-ass banana. But besides the point, I wanted to do a Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth on Purely Sprite because I do feel that going forward, Purely Sprite is the new best way to play Purely. There are a lot of people that have success with the going second builds. If you are a player who likes going second decks, by all means, play the going second builds. Play those pure, purely builds, no pun intended, builds where you can just go second and pop off and break boards and just play blind second. I personally don't like the going second builds. I've tried them. I've tried so many different variations. I love this sprite purely build. So I figured it will be good to um, go through some test hands, show you how this deck works, talk about the choke points and things like that, because this deck is a bit complicated to go against, which is one of the great things about it. Um, because normally the purely choke points that we talked about before in the previous um, Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth talking about purely, um, the choke points of like Lily and stuff like that doesn't necessarily apply to this deck. Um, because of the fact that now with a sprite engine, things that would be choke points aren't necessarily choke points anymore, and you can kind of play through them that way. Now, again, keep in mind that this is 42 cards. I highly recommend you go look at the deck profile that I did where I talk about my matchups and things like that and my thinking behind the deck because, you know, I used to be a net decker back in the day, a little bit of a quick backstory where I would just copy a deck that I see at a regional and play it card for card, but as I've gotten more experience with the game and gotten better at the game throughout the years, been playing since 2008, as I've said before, um, I've been able to sort of build my own decks, you know, off of the back of other builds. You know, I took the top eight build from Ireland Nationals that was playing purely Sprite, and I adjusted it to my own play style and theories that I had about the format, and it worked out for me. So, we're, all, we're going to do several test hands, just like the previous video. Um, this hand's case, so we've opened up Happy Memory, Ash, Purely Leap, Call by the Grave, and Purely. And this hand, uh, well, you know what, let me just shut up and just start playing out the hand here. So, uh, let's see, we've opened up Happy Memory. It's not exactly the best hand in the world, I'll admit. Um, we might be able to hit something off of Purely. So in this hand's case, you could go Happy Memory here, but there's not really anything in your hand that you want to ditch. So I'm going to go ahead and summon out... I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do this in backwards because it's just going to be way too confusing. Uh, we're going to activate Purely's effect to activate the top three cards. So we hit Delicious, Nimble Beaver. The Dark Ruler No More is actually Sprite Gamma Burst. Um, the changes that I've done from the deck profile was that I took out a starter, put in a Talents, and I also put in a Sprite Gamma Burst. So it's now 42 cards. So in this case, we've hit the Delicious Memory, so we can go ahead and take the Delicious Memory. We'll ask the opponent if they have anything in response on Resolution. If they say no, then we are very giddy now, although even if they did, we've got the Call by the Grave. Um, so let's see, how would I play out this hand? Uh, we would, of course, set the Purely Leap. I'm just going to leave it face up so that you know what's in the back row, so we're just going to say that we set that. And we could activate Purely's effect here to make the Delicious Memory into a Plump. 
Um, but instead, I want to get the full value from my Lily, especially since I open up call by and I really don't have to care about any sort of hand traps. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go activate happy memory. Uh, and that's the reason why I set the leap first, because I don't care about protecting my purely from being destroyed by card effects. Uh, I would rather protect my face down, especially since I know that I'm not going to be activating purely's effect uh, to copy anything from the hand, because I'm not going to have anything in the hand, because I'm going to ditch the delicious memory off the happy. Now, if the opponent did, for whatever reason, fucking ghost ogre the purely, uh, you should be laughing, uh, because you can just go chain happy memory and protect it, but then also because, like, why, why would you ever ghost over this? It's going to get the effect. But anyway, uh, so <clears throat> we're going to resolve this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go for Lily. We're going to activate Lily's effect. Uh, if they hand trap us, that's cute. I'm going to go ahead and call by the shit out of you. Um, and then we already opened up Leap, so we get to go for my friend. Uh, of course, we'll ask for anything on resolution. If they already try to activate something, then they're most likely not going to have anything. Uh, we're going to activate the my friend. We're going to go ahead and use its effect to pay 500. Something I learned at the regional, like I said in the deck profile, the three cards that you reveal, you don't have to show which one gets added to your hand. So if you pick like three different cards, you don't show what gets added to your hand. Um, that didn't make me lose any games, but that's definitely good to know. Uh, so we've already got delicious and happy, or uh, excuse me, delicious, yeah, delicious and happy group. So actually, I stand corrected. We are going to be activating Purely's effect. We're going to go ahead and reveal one, two, and three pretty memory. Had uh, the Dino Morphia player I played against. He's like, no, I don't want you picking that one. I want you to pick the middle one. It, it was just comical. Um, so then we'll be shuffling that later because we might be going back into the deck. Now, this is where I was talking about with choke points. Normally... In, in the purely matchup, whether it's pure purely or, you know, purely going second, whatever it is, a choke point that purely normally has is hand trapping the lily. However, because of the fact that now we have opted to go for the sprite engine, it gives us different lines of play to where we're still able to play the ball game despite what they may have. You know, I've talked about before how if you have straight purely street and my friend up, you don't give a shit about Nibiru. And that still kind of applies here, depending on what's in your grave. Um, because of the fact that we've summoned twice, even if I summon five times, I've got Delicious Happy and then soon to be Pretty in my grave, if they were to, like, you know, Kaiju, like the beauty that we make. And then with my friend, you know, if they nib us, we can just get three of our quick plays back and still end on a decent board because, like, we just have the gas for it. So the Sprite Engine not only provides consistency, but it also provides just more gas and, and maybe consistency isn't the right term because we are playing a 42 card deck but it provides more of a scary board you know just ending on like a beauty and a couple back row uh, really to me wasn't doing a whole lot um so that's why we kind of opted for that you can kind of consider this a part two to the deck profile because that deck profile was 18 minutes long i wasn't going to spend another 30 minutes talking about how to play this deck um, so we're going to go ahead and activate Purely's effect first just to see if we can bait out any sort of hand traps. I like to do Purely first if I'm able to in the kind of awkward situation that we're in right now because this isn't a normal hand for the deck um, to see if I can bait anything out because Purely's not once per turn. Um, I like to summon beauty in attack mode just because I've been in situations where like I played in defense and the opponent has something higher than 1100 on my monster's defense to run over it before they activate any effects. Had I played this in defense in my last round, I maybe would have been able to win against Cash Tier and been in seventh place. But, you know, that's besides the point. He was a really cool player. I was just really disappointed in myself that we made those mistakes. Um, now, something that I want to talk about here real quick. Because of the fact, again, that we're playing the Sprite Engine, we are playing Sprite Sprint. Keep in mind that Sprite Sprint specifically says uh, two monsters, and one of them has to be a level two, rank two, or link two. So you could, if you were like in a pinch, you could link off the Beauty and the Lily and go into like a sprint, or like I could have done Lily, target happy memory, make happiness, and then link off the purely and the Lily into sprint, dump an angler for two beavers, and now you have sprite lines. Um, in this case, again, because this hand's kind of abnormal, we're gonna go ahead and target the delicious to make our plump, and then the plump's gonna activate attaching the happy memory and the call by the grave that we're assuming that we're going to activate if the opponent tries to hand trap us of course if we hand if we call by the grave and ash then our ash is dead so hopefully we're not having a call by that we're just going to assume that like maybe we called by a droll or something even though droll hasn't been seeing a lot of play in this format but you get my point so this particular board you end on my friend up you have a purely leap set and you have an ash with a beauty being a uh, monster negate and then you also have the plump that has four materials so at any time you can shotgun the leap to make a five material noir and then you're going to be able to have two bounces uh, to the opponent's bottom of their deck 
And then like I said, you've already got these two interruptions as well. So the opponent draws to, let's say you hit a hand trap, so they played that. They're drawing to five at hand. You've got one, two interruptions, plus if you can grab any spell or traps from their grave that they try and play. If they kaiju you, you've got the my friend to get your quick plays back and you've got the leap to make a noir. Um, yeah, that's really busted. And just to do a quick double shuffle here, let's see what it is that we draw into. Uh, we draw into another purely, so that can kind of go in a lot of different directions. Um, this deck, as I said in the profile, does not give a fuck about branded. All the branded that I played, I never lost to. I either 2 owed them or I drew with them, which happened once because I beat them game one and our game two took forever. I tried to scoop and go to game three, but we didn't have enough time. Um, so this was an example of uh, hand number one. Let's go to hand number two. And we're just going to finish shuffling this up here. I've already shuffled it a couple of times. And I'm sure that you know better than me at this point that this video is long, so I hope you've grabbed a drink, or a snack, or a beer, or your Snuggie. Maybe you're watching this on your TV. Be sure to leave a like if you are still watching all the way to the end. Would very much appreciate it. So let's see. So we've drawn a uh, Lily, an Ash, Jet, that's hot, uh, another Lily, okay, they're not the best, and Sprite Carrot. So... At first glance, you're probably like, wow, Avery, this hand sucks. And yes, I play three Lily and not two. I've discussed my reasoning behind that before, but basically you can use the Lily as discard fodder. So at a glance, this hand, you're probably thinking, Avery, it's it's liquid ass. To a degree, you'd be right. I mean, if we summon the Lily and get hand trapped, our turn it ends. Now, again, what's great about the Sprite engine is that we have other plays that we can do besides that and still kind of be insulated from hand traps. For example... We can go summon Carrot and Special Jet, and then use Jet's effect to search for Starter, and now we have Sprite Lines that we can do. Yeah, we don't really have access to the Purely Engine because we've just kind of opened up all monsters, but that's okay because we can just make a Sprite Board. So let's go ahead and show off what that would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these cards back around so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, we normally summon Carrot, Special Summon Jet. Jet activates effect. If they hand trap us here, if they're like, you know, screw you, Ash. You know, whether it's it's game one and they don't know that you're playing purely Sprite because they've only seen Sprite cards, they may say, well, he kind of opened up awkward. I'm going to end and Ash this. Um, I had that happen at the regional a couple times where I would start off going activate Sprite starter. They would chain Ash, but then I would chain a purely quick play. And that was always a nice play because, one, they would then find out I'm playing purely Sprite and realize that they probably shouldn't have Ash the starter. And then on top of that, two, you can chain the purely quick place to the starter and ditch a card to still special summon out of level one before you're locked into twos from the starter. So even if they hand trap this, we don't care because, I mean, if they Ash us, it's like, okay, thank you. Now we just make Sprint and have all the lines. So we're going to go ahead and activate Jet's effect. And we're going to go for the starter. Uh, and we opened up with carrot, so we're already insulated from uh, any sort of like imperm shenanigans that they want to do. Um, so of course we'll ask for anything on resolution. If they droll us, I mean, fine. They're probably the one person in the room playing droll because at the regional I only got drolled once and it didn't matter because I just had the sprite engine to play through, which is another reason also, actually I'm glad I brought that up. It's another reason why I like the sprite engine because it allows you to play through droll. Granted, it depends on what kind of hand you open up with, but in a hand like this, if my opponent drolls me on the jet, I'm like, I don't give a shit because I'm literally just going to go uh, starter into, in this hand's case, I would still go for blue since we play two copies. Yeah, I can't get the search, but I don't care because I can still go into sprint, dump angler for two beavers, and go from there. Um, but we're just going to assume that they don't droll us or hand trap us or anything. If they do, then yeah, your lines are going to be a bit different. But like, we're not going to go into like super in-depth like that. Like, oh, if they hand trap you, go down this line. Because, you know, sometimes that, that doesn't really happen. You have to make your own decisions as a player to think what's best for you. And it also depends on the matchup as well. You know, maybe you don't go for the blue or the red. Maybe you go for something else. Um, so we summon out blue. We'll take the 11, that's fine, we don't care. We're gonna activate blue's effect. Uh, in this case, we already have carrot, so we're gonna go ahead and go for the uh, red. We will special summon the red. I typically, whenever I play out my fields, for anyone that cares, uh, I typically kind of start from right to left if I know like I'm gonna have like a, a sprint on board. Uh, normally I like to do left to right, but with this this deck I tend to start like here and then go here and here and here. It's just, I'm weird as a player. That's just my little knickknack, little kink. That's what she said <laughs> on how I play. If, if anybody cares, I just, cause I, usually I summon sprint in the leftmost extra monster zone to where it points down to here 
Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm kinky like that, I guess. So we're insulated from all the hand traps. Now, normally with uh, blue and jet, you could make a Dejin Buster here, but because we kind of open suboptimally, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the Sprite Sprint. Hopefully you can see it on camera, yeah. Uh, and then we'll activate Sprite Sprint's effect. Do -ga do -ga do dump our angler. And then angler's effect is gonna activate getting us two beavers, like I said in the last video. The beavers are gonna be building a dam, putting beaver warrior out onto welfare. Going for that. Uh, boom, boom. And then we've still got this zone open here uh, for the sprint lines in case for whatever reason we hit a double cross and we can special summon something that's really not even gonna come up at this point because um, we're not gonna be going down that line. Now, we have a couple choices here. Um, number one, we could go for the Gigantic. The problem with Gigantic is that there's not really anything that we can go for. However, whatever exceed we make, we'll be able to use Sprint's second effect, which everybody had to read, which was really funny, uh, because it just never comes up in normal sprite lines, where if either player special summons a monster while this up, uh, this monster's up, you detach an Xyz material from an Xyz monster on your field, target any monster on either field, and then bounce it to the hand. So this is great with interruptions because you know if you've got a couple negates with like red and carrot and some other purely cards and things, uh, then they try to special summon like say, I don't know, a Mirror Jade uh, or like an Albion if they're trying to fuse, if it's Brandon. You're like, okay, that's cute. Um, Sprint, detach from the Gigantic. It doesn't have any more materials so you detach on your turn. Bounce that Albion back to the extra deck pimp. Um, like that came up a lot at the regional and it was actually really hilarious. Um, but for this hand's case, we opened up monsters here. So it's it's actually looking kind of rough out here. We've only got the starter engrave. Um, so I would say you could do that to go into three. We don't have access to like leap or anything. Uh, so I would say in this hand's case, Honestly, yeah, I think I would just go for the Gigantic. I mean, we don't have any other level twos that we can go for except for uh, Blue, I believe. I mean, you could go for like an Angler or something, which is like fine. Uh, I mean, yeah, like you, you, you could detach and go for the Angler. Um, well, actually, I, I take that back. So you detach the Beaver. We'll go ahead and go for the Angler because it's kind of dead at this point. Now, you could either A, leave this board up with a couple negates and the interrupt, um, or you could kind of take the Pepsi challenge and think that you're not going to use the sprint, and you could do Angler and Gigantic into Mascarena, and then if the opponent tries to do anything, then you can make Underworld Goddess. Underworld Goddess came up three times at the regional, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the profile. Um, with how we opened, I mean, you do end on two negates plus an interruption. Um, so, you know, if you don't if you don't know what you're playing against, I would definitely end on a board like this. Um, if you do know what you're playing against and you feel like Underworld Goddess is a good call, then definitely suck up the Sprint and the Gigantic for Mascarena. Um, and then you still have the Ash, the Carrot, and the Red with possibly the Mascarena ready to go, just depending on what happens. Um, but yeah, even though these boards, you know, you're not putting out a bunch of big attack monsters... You know, it's still a lot of interruptions that the opponent has to play through, especially if you open up like an even better hand, obviously, where like, you know, you have purely leap and um, sprite double cross, you know, then you're just, you're all the way in the driver's seat. Like we did that against our round seven branded opponent, where we ended on something similar to this, obviously not like an angler. And then we had leap and double cross in the back row and he just couldn't even play. Like it, it was disgusting. But this is hand number two. Let me just try and shuffle again and see if I can get like a, a much better god hand. I promise you this deck only at least at 41, was only bricking like 9% of the time, if that, even then the 9% hands were still kind of playable. So let me shuffle again, let's try for hand number three. All right, let's try this, let's try it again. Let me, I'm glad that I'm showing y'all like the, the decent hands, but I'd still rather like get a much better hand here that can kind of show off what this deck can do. Okay, this is kind of more like it's not perfect, but like it's it's kind of more up the alley of what we're looking for. So um, we can't do any draw face shenanigans because obviously Delicious requires a monster on board, but I mean, that's fine. Um, so we're gonna go summon Lily, activate the effect. Again, we're just gonna assume that they don't have any sort of hand traps or anything because if, if they do, they do. Um, let's see, so we opened up Delicious. So let's go for, yeah, let's just go for the leap because if, if you open up Delicious, like you're already kind of winning. Um, like, th this card's just so good. Um, 
or the, the delicious is so good, I mean. So uh, that resolves, we'll go ahead and set the delicious. I'm just gonna leave it face up so that y'all know it's there. We're gonna activate the delicious, um, choosing the leap. We're gonna go ahead and discard the, Lily's too good of a fucking card. So yeah, we're gonna ditch the purely to go for another purely. This is in the grave, we'll activate purely's effect. And now that the delicious memories in the grave were definitely doing well. You could have also um, normal summon purely, excavate the top three, uh, but I would rather guarantee myself the lily search and then still be able to get the excavate of three off of the purely because you just go delicious and then ditch a dead card out of your hand. So um, again, though, that's also why I play three lily instead of two because worst case you use a quick play spell to ditch a lily, you know, get it back with leap and then, you know, you're, you're good to go. Uh, so let's see, we're doing one, two, and three. So we hit Sleepy. So we'll add back Sleepy and put the carrot and the angler on the bottom. I'm always afraid of hitting sprite cards with this, but I mean, now that we're playing 42, at least for now, like that's just bound to happen. Um, so now we're gonna activate Lily's effect, targeting the delicious memory. We'll go ahead and play it in the middle zone here to go for plump. And now we get to really show off what the sprite engine can do. So remember, level rank link twos, you've got yourself a rank two up. You can summon like a level two here. Now, if I do remember correctly, uh, yeah, okay, blue says a level or rank two. I wanna make sure I didn't screw that up because if it said level link two, then yeah, no, this doesn't help. Then you would have to do like, okay, uh, purely and like the plump into like a sprint, but luckily we opened up this one. Um, if you were in a situation where like you opened up a sprite where it required like a link two or something, then yeah, in that case, you would be forced to go sleepy ditch Lily, go for another purely and try and make something out of it. Um, luckily we opened up this. So we're gonna go ahead and use Blue's effect. Normally we don't have to usually be that lucky. Maybe this is the deck's way of telling me I need to drop it back to 41 instead of 42. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and use Blue's effect. We've already summoned two, three, four times. We can use the purely to go into something. So yeah, let's go ahead and go into red because as I've talked about before in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, if anybody wants to draw a Nibiru, all they gotta do is play me and they're gonna have the Nibiru up their ass every time. So we get out the red for summon number five. So now they gotta have like an Imperm and a Nibiru if they actually wanna Nibiru us. Um, which, I mean, if they've got that, then you do you, Sugar Boo Bear. You're probably gonna win the ball game anyway. We're gonna link off the purely and the blue back into our boy Sprint. This card is disgusting in the deck. We're gonna activate Sprint's effect to dump the Angler. We're gonna activate Angler's effect to get out two Beavers and put Beaver Warrior back on the welfare line. Uh, boom and boom. Um, and now, yeah, now, now we really get to show off what the deck does here. So we've got two Beavers up. Uh, Sleepy and Lily Billy. Uh, we're gonna do the two beavers here. Now, remember that the purelys are ranked two, so you can do like the two level two beavers into like a beauty or something. It won't have the quick effect negate because it doesn't have pretty memory, but still just to, like have a body on the board, especially since now we're playing Gamma Burst, it's so much easier to OTK. Um, going second. Uh, so just keep in mind that that is an option against this deck. Like if I was going second, I could slam these two beavers into a happiness, attack for 2,000, and then use the effect to search for happy memory. I won't be able to cut their attack and because I don't have the happy memory, but I can still search the happy memory, play it, attach it to the happiness, and then bounce a spell or trap on their field. And now it can attack again and cut attack in half. So keep all that in mind when you are making these lines. You don't just have to make gigantic sprite or anything like that. So uh, we do this. We're going to go ahead and activate the gigantic sprite's effect. Remember that you can also use sprint if you're just trying to go for game and then just keep a beaver up for something else. Um, but we're just going to assume that we're going first because you're not going to be blind seconding with this deck. Seconding? Is that a word? I don't know. Uh, we go for jet here. We already have the leap. We And, okay, so this is actually a good point to talk about. So I went for jet, right? Activate Jet's effect. I can either A, go for starter, or B, for go, go for double cross. In any situation where you already have a level one purely established on a purely exceed, you wanna go for the uh, double cross. The reason for this is because that uh, the double cross can net you another material so that you can potentially have a five mat noir, or if you already have leap established with say like a plump, specifically plump because if you've got the delicious it can attach you two spells or traps, I went for starter. The main thing that is good with double cross is that double cross specifically says to target a monster on either field or in either grave, and then you can use the effect to attach it to a rank to exceed. 
This is how, like if for example, I used the two nimble beavers and went into say like a purely plump, that's how you get a level one. Because if I went for say double cross because I didn't have a level one under a purely, I could activate double cross to attach the purely from my grave to say like the plump as a material. Now, when I use leap over the plump, it doesn't matter how many materials the Noir has. If it's got five or more, it's gonna be unaffected. But now that it has specifically a level one purely as a material, it's now a quick effect detach two to target a card on the field. So in this case, I already have the level one and I've got leap. As much as I wouldn't mind going for double cross, I'm actually going to go for starter here because we still have carrot in the deck and I wanna get as many interruptions established on the board as possible. So we're gonna go for the starter, or one of. I cut it down to one, because the second one was definitely dead. Like, yeah, you could use it for discard fodder, but I'd rather ditch like something else if I don't need it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go uh, starter. I don't believe we've activated, yeah, no, that was the last uh, hand. We haven't activated starter yet. <clears throat> to go for the carrot. Now, uh, something else that you could do here if for whatever reason, like you didn't wanna activate the starter this turn, which uh, definitely don't make that misplay, because remember it locks you into twos. Um, you could, if you weren't going for like the Noir line, you could set the starter and pass along, you know, like set Sleepy Memory or something. And then you could activate starter, get out the carrot, and then since you special summon a monster, you could use the sprint to bounce on the opponent's monsters back to their hand. Um, that is an interaction. It doesn't really come up for me that often. Uh, but we'll activate the starter and go for carrot. And like I said, you've got the leap set. And then as I've talked about in my uh, YouTube short, try and keep a Sleepy Memory set so that you can insulate yourself from damage. This is your hand. <clears throat> so now, when you look at your board, you have the carrot, which is a, uh, a negate. You've got the spring, which is a bounce interrupt. You've got the plump that can attach two spells or traps to it as a material, which we still haven't done this turn. Uh, so we can go ahead and use the plump to attach the starter. So now it's got three materials. Plus, once we use sleepy, it'll have four, and then the noir will have five. Um, so you end on one, two, uh, Possibly three if you wait to activate the leap to banish a monster on their field, depending on like the game state and like what you're playing against. It all depends on that kind of stuff, obviously. But one, two, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say potentially three. Well, actually, no, I'm not even gonna count this because we're gonna activate this in the draw phase to get draws. So one, two, three. Uh, the Noir is, uh, I guess, technically four five because it can bounce twice. Um, and then you get the Lily for follow-up next turn. Um, and then let's see what you draw. So you do leap in the draw phase. Plump is gonna attach you a card. You think the jet's dead, but really you contribute it with red or carrot. So it's not, even that's not totally dead. Um, if you really wanted to, then before you play starter, you could do gigantic and jet into Mascarena to have Underworld Goddess on standby. Um, but I would rather have this set up because I can tribute this just for fodder for carrot or red. To me at this point, if I'm establishing, especially like all this with a Noir, I'm not gonna give a shit about making Underworld Goddess because I'm gonna have to give up at least three of my monsters between the Spring Masquerade and something else. So then we're gonna go standby, draw off the Purely. We're gonna go leap target the Plump to make the Noir. <clears throat> kind of losing my voice here a little bit. And then we're gonna use the Noir off the Sleeping Memory again to draw again. Now again, keep in mind that at least the time we're recording this since I'm testing Gamma Burst in the main deck, this is 42 cards and we're still only playing six hand traps, that being three Ash, three Imperm. So I, I usually never expected to draw anything off of my Sleepy Memory draws. Um, so do keep that in mind. You can always cut this down to 40 or 41, just whatever it is that you prefer. Um, but regardless, this is still gas for next turn and for turn you're drawing into an Ash. So, you know, if the opponent tries to do something cheeky on your turn, and then you've got the double bounce and things like that. that This is like a typical M board. And like, again, it may not look super scary because you don't have all these big boss monsters, but unless the opponent's got Dark Ruler, which in their main deck in game one, I don't know why the hell they're gonna be doing that. This is like kind of the more normal board that you would be ending on. And it's, it's absolutely disgusting. It's very hard for a lot of decks to play through this. This is a hand that I just shuffled up and wanted to put here as I kind of discussed the choke points and things. What are some choke points in this deck and what is good against this deck? Um, honestly, Kurakara Divine Karna is amazing because like what you saw with that last board, 
it's all monsters, you know, negating effects. You know, it's not really the back row. So if you're able to kind of grind out your hand, whatever it is your opening hand is, and you know, you're able to get the uh, purely sprite player to use a lot of their monster negates and you cure a car of them, they're gonna lose all of that. Like, yeah, we can sit here and do cute chain block things, like use a purely quick play, ditch angler, go for Lily, angler chain link one, Lily chain link two to guarantee that we get the beavers. But at the end of the day, no matter what kind of board we build, if you dark ruler it, that purely sprite player is probably going to lose. I mean, unless they've got like leap and or double cross, preferably both or even at least the leap in their back row to go into the noir. Kaijuing uh, the purely exceed, assuming that they only have one up or even the noir can hurt, especially if you're able to play through the negates. Um, having, I guess, multiple evenly matches can be helpful because, I mean, carrot is a hard once per turn. Um, the Noir doesn't really matter if that's the only thing you're playing through, depending on what kind of hand you have. Um, but Board Breakers, Dark Rulers are fantastic against this deck. It's, it's all about getting into those monster effects and negating those, um, you know, just negating their board and then, you know, building your own. You know, if they've got something like My Friend set up, if you're able to, you know, pop that before you get rid of their purely monsters that they don't get any sort of recursion back is very helpful. You know, it, it really, if your deck, I would argue, has a good time against Sprite, I feel like in turn you're going to have a good matchup against this because, I mean, it's just basically more monster stuff because it's more purely shit. It's just, it's a purely deck that's able to extend more because of the fact that it has the purely or excuse me, the Sprite Engine. Um, I'll go ahead and show off this hand as well, just because that there are a couple things I want to discuss with it here. Uh, so we're gonna use the My Friend Pay 500. I'm not gonna reveal the three cards. We're just gonna say that we go for uh, Pretty Memory since we're going first, because Delicious Memory is only a 33% chance. Um, so we go Pretty Memory, obviously ask for a response. This is something that, as I was just mentioning, you can ditch Angler off of the Purely Quick Plays to get Angler's effect. And now, this is also why the Sprite Engine is good, because again, now we can do chain blocking, so we can kind of guarantee some stuff. So Angler Chain Link 1, Lily Chain Link 2, because, I mean, I've already opened up purely Leap, so that's even better. Even if I don't open up Leap, it's like, who cares? I'm getting two Beavers, and I'm going to build a board in the gates. Like, please, by all means, waste your hand trap on this Lily. Like, that's the other thing. Like, whatever hurts Sprite can also kind of hurt this deck in extension, because it's playing a Sprite Engine. So... Uh, anyway, we're going to use Lily's effect uh, to go ahead. We're only playing uh, one uh, leap, so I'm going to go ahead and go for another My Friend just because I like having multiple copies in my hand personally. You could also go for another Lily or a Purely. Uh, it just all depends on what you want to go for um, depending on the board state. The Beavers go, or excuse me, the Angler goes for two Beavers. Uh, you could also go into Sprint at this point if you wanted to to get out the third Beaver. Um but from here, this is like your basic board state, right? Like you you have a lot of different lines you can do here. You're obviously gonna set the purely leap to have that ready for the next turn. These beavers can become gigantic, which can become, uh, that would even be on summon number four. So then gigantic would detach by summon number four. Then you're insulated from Nibiru. You can go into blue. Uh, Blue's effect can get you to jet to get you to double cross. Then you have both of your traps. You've also got a fucking ash. Like, this hand's actually really disgusting. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the, the sprite engine doesn't hurt you at all. Um, something that I loved doing at the regional, personally, was doing this. You make gigantic. Let's say that you've got a, a purely quick play in your hand. It doesn't matter which one. You activate sprite, of, uh, gigantic sprite effect, right? They say no response. Then you can chain like a purely quick play, and then it resolves. You ditch a card to summon a level one. Well, because you chained it to the gigantic, that means you're still going to be able to get to special summon level one because you're not locked into twos until this resolves. So you get out the level one, then you detach, then you can go for the blue, and then you've got more plays that way, right? So. It, definitely a lot of nuances to this deck that will catch a lot of people off guard. Like I said, if they don't know you're playing purely Sprite and you just start off your turn and draw phase by slamming down a starter, they're going to think that you're playing Sprite. They may ash you and then you can chain like a pretty memory or something and then they're going to be salty because they wasted their ash. You know, I mean, it's just, it's all the gas to the floor to end on a fat ass board. So especially if you get leap and double cross set with a bunch of other stuff, the opponent's not going to be winning unless they're playing board breakers, which most decks in game one are not going to be doing that unless they're playing rank eight axis, which I mean, if you're playing against that, then that's just bad luck because that deck ain't doing well right now. 
So guys, let me know what you think about this Yu-Gi-Oh! in depth. Let me know in the comments below any questions you have. I'll try to make a follow-up video or answer it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.